Hello there, welcome to AWS Tech Guide session. In this session, I will be talking about non-functional requirements or NFR. When you are working with architects or you are in enterprise architecture or in architecture group, you may be hearing about NFR. So what are those NFR, how it is created and what are the best practices for creating NFR? we'll be talking in this session okay now first thing is nfrs or non functional requirements are the quality requirements of a system it is captured separately than functional requirements so what are the differences between functional requirements and non functional requirements first thing is that Functional requirements, it is mandatory because these are the business needs which IT delivers. So these are the functional mandatory needs you need to create in your system. But for non-functional requirement, definitely it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory, but these are the quality requirement. Functional requirement captures the use cases, business, used to give the use cases the feature which needs to be developed in a particular system but in case of non functional requirement it is a quality attribute so quality attribute means that how fast my application should be accessible whether it is in millisecond nanosecond or how fast okay but when we call it how fast that if your client is asking that i need my application very fast then you should ask how fast means if it is 10 milliseconds 20 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds let's specify that that's called quality attribute and it is captured in non functional requirement next functional requirements are product features when a customer has asked they need an online form with four fields and two buttons. This is called a product feature. But NFRs are product properties. As I said, how fast this application should respond, how secure this application is. These are the quality requirements or product properties we call it. Again, functional requirement is the functionality of the software and the non-functional requirement verifies the performance of the software. It gives the user's experience. User's experience are captured in non-functional requirement, but user need, business need or use cases are captured in functional requirement. Now, why we write non-functional requirement because it is a complete separate documentation and it is very very important in most of the project you will find that you are missing this functional requirement but during maintenance phase the project manager is looking for my god what was committed that for this quality requirements of my softwares okay so during project sdlc the project team must document all this non-functional requirement. The first thing is that NFRs ensure the software system follows the legal and compliance. These are the quality attributes or the product properties. It will definitely not be into use cases or business functional requirement. Okay, so this legal and compliances ensure reliability, availability and performance of the software based on the user's experience. It is just not that create an online form that how will be the user's experience and how easily user can submit the online application. That's the purpose of the product quality. So that's the reason. NFR, NFR is required. It ensures the company standard and the security policies. When you write NFRs, you capture the com 
company standards and the security policies, data security, data integrity, all these things to align with your enterprise architecture. Next is that what are the best practices when you are writing non-functional requirement? First one is be very specific and clear in quantifying the requirements. As I gave an example that when your client is asking you, my application should be very fast. Now your question should be how fast? 10 millisecond, 20 millisecond or 30 millisecond like that. Specify that requirements. That's why it is called quantifying requirements. Use precise details. Avoid any kind of ambiguity. There should not be any different thought by anyone who will be reading that NFO. Now, what are the NFO elements? I have categorized the NFR elements in three categories. Now again, let me tell you that there is no specific set of NFR. A NFR document can be two pages or 20 pages. It depends on you what are the elements or the product attributes or the quality requirements you want to capture in your project. But these are the categories or the properties I have captured on this slide to help you to start with what are the basic necessary product attributes or the properties you need to capture in your NFR documentation. So the three categories are product requirement, organizational requirement, and external requirement. So the product requirement is that how efficient that product should be, how reliable, how portable or how usability should act in that product, how will be the performance for that product. So all should be very precisely described and the requirement should be quantifiable. Now organizational requirements when it is enterprise architecture standard at organizational level definitely in your organization you will have enterprise architecture standard. So when you are building something in any of the project you have to be aligned with the enterprise architecture standard. Regulatory and compliance requirement. The project manager should be thinking or the solution architect what are the regulatory or compliance requirement when they are building a system or modifying a system like this. Company standard, every change should be aligned with the company standard. Data security, they have to think of from the organizational perspective. So what are the points they have to think of for the data security? So these are the area for the product requirement and organizational requirement. Now, if your application or the system you are or developing or modifying is external facing then there are few other properties as well interoperability and security and privacy so when your application or your software is connecting to third party or any other system so that point you have to check the interfaces or interoperability as well as the security the data security as well as the privacy. So these are the basic element I have consolidated over here. But again, I'm telling you that as per your organizational need, you can have hundreds of element in your NFR documentation. But if you are thinking of that, what are the best elements you need to start with? These are the elements. But let me emphasize non-functional requirements are very important and it is very much required during maintenance phases as well. Hope you have a good understanding of non-functional requirement, why we need it, how to write it, what are the best practices and what are the elements you need to capture and you can tailor made your NFR documentation as per your enterprise architecture in your organization. Thank you for your time. If you have any question, please post in the question box. I'll be happy to help you. See you in our next session. Thank you.